God bless you, Susan Waldrop. Thursday, January 7th, 2016. My, 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 what is going on with our world? Well, I have been uh, hearing a lot of the things. Of course, I stay with the news like you do, I hope, so that we can pray for things that are happening. But also, I see a big word that the Holy Spirit was putting over the my mind and and just seeing as as it's easy to see many times with our natural eyes and then god gives us that spiritual sight that we he shows us what actually spiritually is manifesting which means it's been in the spirit spiritual world for quite a while and now it is finally manifesting we are seeing and of course it this these things begin to happen right in the month of january so this sort of sets the scene for many more uh larger on a larger scale these types of things that that we see manifesting in january that will be happening in February and so on the other months going down. So I want to dedicate this time to the Lord firstly, and then I'm gonna share with you what he has shown me that we are experiencing, um, really beginning to move into in a big way. Thank you, Father God, for this time. We love you, Lord, and we ask you to bless our day. Anoint us and appoint us and send us father as your voice your ambassador this day bless us father with everything that we need to accomplish your will we give you all the glory for this day we take no credit lord but we lay prostrate before you humbling ourselves, thanking you for every good thing that you put in the midst of our path and we thank you for the lives that we will be able to speak positive love from you into their lives in the name of Jesus. Amen. Okay, now the big word that the Holy Spirit was showing me was that uh, as I was reading, of course, we know California is in a state of emergency declared by Governor Brown as of yesterday, January 6th, which we've been watching this uh, gas leak since last October get bigger and bigger and they have no way to control it. They can't just shut it down. They can't shut it off. And of course, I have been seeing in the spirit, uh, you know, they will not allow airplanes to fl fly above in this space or even near it, which is increasing larger and larger daily. And um, so finally, uh, what I was seeing, of course, I should back up. The Lord gave me a dream, several dreams. But one dream in particular where I saw the entire California coastline was on fire. And this was uh, several years ago. And I thought, are you serious? This is crazy. The whole California is on fire. Well, I saw it at nighttime and it was like a wall of fire. I did. That's the best way to explain it. And all of the headlights, you know, of all of the thousands of cars on all of the freeways just trying to escape the city because not only instantly it was like this fire happened, but the best way to describe it was a wall of fire, something I've never seen in my life. And um, right after the Lord gave me this dream, there actually were several terrible fires that uh, they they were like phenomenal fires that did happen in California. And I thought possibly that was it. Now I'm thinking, no, I don't think so, because that was not the magnitude that I saw in the dream. So I'm thinking as I'm watching this state of emergency declared over a huge methane leak in Los Angeles County yesterday, that all it's going to take is one spark. And it's not that it's maybe going to happen this month, although it could, but it's possibly down the road that it is just going to erupt into a huge wall of fire. And you see, if this does happen, it could trigger uh, instantly many houses would be on fire. Uh, I mean, already there's a whole lot of terrible sicknesses that are happening from this. You know, animals and children and people, they've they've moved out thousands of people uh, from their home 
And of, of course, we're not really hearing too much about this. Maybe we are now because the governor cannot deny it. So uh, possibly now there will be more attention brought to this and the uh, gas company will be forced to accept responsibility. Not that that's going to change much because other than financially for the people, because still this is out of control and uh, there is no, they, they don't have any, uh, they don't have any way that they see they're going to stop this thing. It's just going to go on and on and on. And so that state of emergency, the big word that the Holy Spirit was giving me over uh, in my mind as I uh, sat down and I read this one article that I've been watching with regarding California is that the big word was state of emergency, emergency, emergency kept flashing in my brain, this word. And so to me, that signifies that we are going to see not only state of emergencies declared in many states, not just the United States, but states internationally, uh, and not just the word state that represents a physical state, but the state of something, you know, the condition of something, the state of, meaning uh, the status quo of what's happening uh, environmentally, emotionally with people, um, all different ways. So I just uh, got on the computer and I googled state of emergency to see what might come up because I I don't know what is really all of the news that's going on out there. I'm just like you. I just go through it. So I saw in the Great Falls Tribune, uh, reservation declared state of emergency for drug use. This was January 6, which was yesterday. Amazing. So the after hours of emotional testimony of from law enforcement officials and people on and off the reservation, Fort uh, Bell, Bell, Belknap Indian Community Council voted unanimously this week to declare a state of emergency against uh, metha, methylmine, and other drugs on the reservation. So you see, this is uh, another state of emergency that is maybe not had a lot of headlines, but here it is. And another state of emergency, believe this or not, from the Washington Post, Michigan Governor Rick Snyder, Republican, declared a state of emergency in Flint because of high levels of land in the city's drinking water. The action came hours after, after the U.S. Justice Department told reporters that it is working with the Environmental Protection Agency to investigate this situation. The damaged, uh, Snyder in his declaration said, the damaged water infrastructure and leaking uh, leaching of lead into the city's water caused damage to public and private water infrastructure and has either caused or threatened or cause or to cause elevated blood lead levels, especially in the population of children and pregnant women and causing a potential and immediate threat to public health and safety and disrupting vital community services. So there we have in Michigan, Another state of emergency. Another state of emergency is also happening in China. And what is that state of emergency? Stock plunge, 7% triggering another market closure. Now, uh, I know Pastor Paul uh, Bigley, who I watch sometimes, had a post this morning, I believe it was, regarding the closure of the stock. Not the closure, maybe the stock, but that the stock was drastically dropping. So uh, here we see China's share market traded for less than 30 minutes Thursday, slumping 7% before triggering the second emergency market closure this week and generating talk of a crisis, another crisis we see. Okay, so then the other one that I noticed also is Lafourche Parish declares state of emergency for potential flooding. LaForge Parish is under a state of emergency as high water moves south down the Mississippi River and could result in the uh, Morganza spillway being opened. Parish President Jimmy 
Cantrell signed the declaration today, but called it strictly as precautionary measure in case other action needs to be taken. However, it is always best to be prepared. The declaration comes a day after the Terrebonne Live, uh, Live and Con Conservation District unanimously approved a state of emergency with high waters threatening to flood the uh, A-T-C-H-A-F-A-L-A-Y-A -A -A River and the surrounding areas. So here we have many states of emergency happening. And there are others, I'm sure. So it's amazing. As you ask the Holy Spirit what's going on, and he gives you a keyword or this or that. The other thing that I wanted to make a mention was that the, the enemy, now this is totally speaking spiritually, but those that have an ear to hear will have the Holy Spirit will, will, it will agree with your spirit. Um, the Holy Spirit was showing me that there is also a state of emergency with the terrible demonic influences that are trying to crush God's people. These are high, you know, it says that we wrestle against spirit, uh, high uh, spirits in high places, uh, wickedness and this kind of thing. And so what the Lord was showing me also is there is a state of emergency spiritually for my people that are in me to have eyes to see and continue to pray and ask me to reveal what's going on around them personally. Because we must be wise as serpents, but gentle as doves. This means that we must have our armor on. It's not as, this is not to scare anybody, but it's just to show you what the Lord is showing me. And I pray that uh, you are daily asking God to keep you alert and also a heads up for these new evil wicked high spirits that are i'm sure penetrating the atmosphere and they are also we know running around on the earth looking to and fro to see who that they could devour and kill so this is another spiritual emergency that i see that you're not going to find in the news but is much more deadly because if the enemy can depress you this is a terrible thing. We don't want to be depressed and we must recognize that it's not us depressing us. It's not situations that are causing us to be depressed, but these are spiritual attacks. These are spirits of depression. So if we can call them by name and put a tag on them, a name on them and see this entity, this evil, wicked spirit as a spirit of depression and just picture a, an image if you want or, a, you know, whatever. But what you want to do is to rebuke it and you want to cast it away from your life. And of course, we do this by thanking the Lord for his blood on our life daily and that, um, you know, we keep in constant uh, communion with the Holy Spirit. This is the way we stay safe in the Lord. And so I uh, wanted to read a couple of scriptures, and we have a couple of prayer requests that have come in. The website uh, is growing exponentially, unbelievably. The viewership and the subscriptions on YouTube is ranging around... Um, at least 100 up daily. So there is an interest there. And I thank God for you that are new subscribers. I'm so very thankful. I pray that these uh, messages are helping you with your day and your walk with the Lord. Um, I try to show on these little videos what the Holy Spirit is showing me daily. I don't have series of this or I'm um, not selling a bunch of books or <laughs> anything like that. I am showing you what the Lord is showing me and also sharing dreams and visions that he gives me. I have had several open visions with the Lord and also my heart is to encourage the people to have their own relationship with the Lord. Um, as I go out, as I have gone out in the past and ministered over many, many years since about 1984, uh, my husband and I went out and um, did music, you know, witnessed that way and evangelized, um, and my bio is, is on the website, susanwaldrop.org. You can see a little bit more. 
as well as MiracleMinistriesChristianCenter.com is another website that shows the beginnings truly of the ministry years ago. So um, this is my goal is to have the people encourage them to have their own relationship with God and not to look to people to give them a word, but we need to seek God for ourselves because it's so easy to put something on uh, it, that we don't, um, we need to ask God that we, we are trusting him, that he will lead us and guide us. And do not think that you have to have a word of this or that, or you're going to go into an anxiety, you know, uh, a problem with anxiety because because we need to be at peace with the Lord and not always think that we need a personal word. If you do really need a personal word and it is an emergency, believe me, God knows where you are. He knows your address. He will speak it to you, give it to you in a dream, a vision of the night or whatsoever. And if you don't get one right away, don't get upset. Don't think you're doing something wrong because you're not. Keep your heart pure and in love with Christ and at the cross whatsoever happens knowing he sees you he is with you he said i will never leave you nor forsake you you see people will fail you many prophetic people uh, i'm sure i have missed it sometimes myself you know when i people have asked me to pray over them this or that and i've done i've earnestly done the best i could i have sought the lord Sometimes I felt it really was God, but you know, I'm only human. So you don't get your eyes on Susan, that's for sure. Keep your eyes on Christ because uh, we don't want to elevate ourselves. We want to keep ourselves on the ground looking up because God is no respecter of person. We must remember that. And you must remember how much he dearly loves you. He's not forgotten you. He hasn't put you on the shelf and helping somebody else. You should never envy, envy what someone else is doing with the Lord is doing through them. You should just be so thankful that God Almighty loves you personally, that he is using you. He will use you and he will take care of all of your needs also. Okay, just a couple of things that uh, a couple of scriptures, Second Peter 3, 2 through 4, New King James Version, I'm reading, that you may be mindful of the words which were spoken before by the holy prophets and of the commandment of us, knowing this, uh, knowing this first, that scoffers will come in the last days walking around with their own, to their own lusts, and saying, where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation. Now we know this is happening today. I'm sure you've experienced this in your own life. Uh, people come around and they'll say, well, you, you know, you said God showed you this. Well, look at it says in the Bible that, and none of this is happening. None of what you said is coming to pass. Well, we can know one thing, that the word of God, he says, uh, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. God promised us he was coming back for us. He will. He will definitely be here. And we must surrender our will. And we must also not worry about what these scoffers say. For surely these are not only just regular people that are saying this to us, but these are world leaders that we see saying this. I even saw that, uh, I believe it was Cameron, I'm not positive who it was, another video I saw of a representative in England that was saying he was going to get rid of all the extremists. And so uh, some videos are suggesting that this means not only a uh, radical, you know, uh, terrorists, but this also means radical Christian believers, you know, that we are, and, and we do know that we are probably on a list, but you know, we don't let these things move us. We continue to walk with Christ. It is our personal walk with Christ. This is the very big thing that he moved on my heart to begin doing a couple of years ago is to make these little videos for you one-on-one -on -one. because see this is the way 
we walk with Christ one on one. We pray for each other as a body, but it is ultimately a one on one walk. And so this is so very important that we do not look to this, look to that. People used to try to get me to go to meetings, you know, along my life that would say, oh, well, this great big uh, well-known A-list person is going to be speaking, you know, this A-list person is going to be prophesying, this A-list musician, you know, you'll, you know, you'll learn this and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, you know, I just don't really need all of that. I only need Christ because you see, Jesus knows where where we are. You don't need to travel 250 miles where a prophetic person is speaking or a healing meeting is happening. If God tells you to do that, that's one thing. But you don't need to do something because somebody else tells you you need to do that. You need to know God loves you and he will heal you. Uh, the Betty, I believe it is Betty Baxter, a wonderful testimony of a lady years ago that uh, she was on TBN sharing her testimony of how Jesus visited her right where she was in her home. He would speak to her for months. He told her the exact day and date and all of that, that he was going to physically come in and heal her. Nobody believed her except her mama. I believe it was. And at the day approached, her mother went and told the people at church, Jesus is coming to heal my daughter. Only, I believe only a few people came. But you know, Jesus did come. A mighty rushing wind showed up and it blew open the windows, I think. I can't remember the exact testimony, but it was an awesome testimony. And Jesus stepped through this cloud and he walked right over to Betty. And he healed her in her home. This is where we need healing. We don't need healing on the other side of the planet. We don't need a healing that we have to kill ourselves to get to the meeting. We need Jesus right where we are. And this is, you know, something that I had a hard time even fathoming myself. When God spoke to me and said, Susan, you don't need to worry about that you're not physically with the person that you're doing these videos with because I'm with them. This is the, the majesty, the, the glory, the true miracle that divides and separates and lets us know it's not us. It's God. This is the lady in England that her eyes were healed. And she said, Susan, she wrote me back several times and she says, I received your package in the mail. She said, I saw this figure in a white gown at my door. And then when I reached to get my reading glasses to pick up your book, she said, I realized I didn't need my glasses anymore. And she started to cry. And she says, truly, I have been healed. My eyes. Another one said, and she wrote me back several times and she said, you know, it's still healed. My eyes are still healed. All we can do is thank Jesus. Thank God. Because Susan wasn't there. Susan doesn't have any power. We only have power in Christ. He is the one that does these miracles. We don't have any power. But through Christ, our faith, we can believe and ask him for all things. So it is all through Christ. And he told me he was going to do this. He told me years ago, he said, I'm going to heal people right through these little videos. I'm going to heal them. Why should I not believe God? Why should I be worried about what people would say? Maybe all of the crazy comments that I received. Don't you know, I do receive many of them. I receive wonderful positive ones. I receive all kinds of crazy ones also telling me I have too much makeup. I have this. I have that. Calling me a Jezebel. I mean, you know, I'm sorry if they see that, but I can't please everybody. I cannot please everybody. And I'm not trying to please anybody except for Christ. I'm only going to do what Jesus said. That's enough. That's all he asks any of us to do is to just listen to him, humble ourselves, and trust him and believe him that he will do these things for us. He will heal us. He will take care of our finances. I've had several emails. Um, I, I want to go on and uh, letting a few of these scriptures set them aside. 
I want to read some of these emails that have come in. Uh, Fam writes, Dear Susan, an urgent prayer request for my mother, Orlean, who is suffering from heart disease and many circulation issues, including a tear in her aorta. Her dementia is awful now. Pray she will have peace. See, these are serious things. These are the things that we need to come together to pray that Jesus will touch this life. This is what we need to be doing. We need to get our eyes off of, you know, our negative, our uh, doubts. You know, it's so easy to say God will do it for somebody else, but he won't do it for me. Why wouldn't he do it for you? If he'll do it for the Queen of England or anybody else, as wicked as you may think she is. While others write me and say, she's a nice lady. I can only tell you what the Lord gave me a dream about her years ago. She didn't seem wicked in the dream. Maybe I was seeing with God's eyes. I don't know. I just know the dream. And I believe it was the Lord. Anyway, we need to pray for these important things that God puts before us because we are the body. You and I are the body of Christ. And there's more power in the spirit than ever in the physical. But we are truly in the state of emergency. God showed me that it's going to elevate, elevate, elevate. It's going to be that it will be so common to be seeing in the news, state of emergency here, state of emergency there. It's going to just snowball. We're going to see a lot of negative things start to really surfacing, really become surfacing. But we need to keep our eyes on Christ and we need to pray for each other. So if you don't have time to pray for somebody else, you're too busy, pause the video and come back when you do have time. Don't just shut the video off and say, I don't have time. Because did Jesus say this for you when he died on the cross? I don't have time. I think I'll pause it. And I'm not trying to point any arrows. I'm just speaking out of what I'm feeling the heart of the Lord would say. Because we are his voice. We are his ambassadors. It's very important that we walk in love, not hatred. We walk in crucifixion. We do not walk in personal elevation, selfishness, pride, envy, greed, none of these things. We are ready to walk away from our house, our car. Any of these things are just things. We're not to get our eyes on things except Christ. He's the only thing that we need to have our eyes on, and that is the gospel. Father, we lift up this one, Orlean, who's suffering from a heart disease and many circulation issues, including a tear in her aorta and dementia. All of these things, Father God, we come up against in the name of Jesus, and we apply the blood of Jesus over her life now. And we thank you and trust you that you are healing her right now in the name of Jesus. Father, we take the oil in proxy and we ask you to anoint her Holy Spirit. You go in, I've seen you Holy Spirit, I know you're real. I've seen the cloud, I have seen you and I thank you Holy Spirit. I trust you are moving now as I feel, I feel the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. Hello, dear Susan. My name is Rachel. I'm going to try to just briefly read a few lines from a couple of emails here because some of them are very lengthy and I, I can't read them all. Dear Susan, my name is Rachel. I was raised Catholic, although we were very lukewarm. Thank God she's not now. I have looked into other denominations I went through a time of abandon and then a new false religion, such as the New Age movement. By God's amazing grace, he never allowed me to stray too far from him. I am now born again at 36 years old, and I have 
awakened spirit in my heart. However, Susan, I battle with depression and chronic pain. And she goes on. Father, we lift up Rachel in the name of Jesus. This pain and also, Father God, this depression. We say, be thou whole and healed. I hear the Lord saying, you know that story about where he says, Tabitha Kumi, rise. Tabitha Kumi. Jesus called that spirit right back into that little girl. And that's what I feel like he is saying to you. My daughter Rachel, come up and rise up out of the depths, the ashes of the death places in your past. Leave those ashes of death behind you. Rise and awaken to the world of the Lord, the peace of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Dear Susan, I need miracles in my finances. I have not been working for a while. I'm trying to get my business going and my investors fall through. Please pray for financial restoration and abundance this year for me. And God gives me more than I ever dreamed possible. So, Father, we pray for Yvonne. And we thank you, Lord God, that you see her right where she is. We ask, Holy Spirit, that you show her which doors the people that you have in front of her, Lord. Which doors to go through, which doors to not go through. We ask, Father God, that you open and shut the doors. And I extend this to everyone that is needing financials, financial uh, security and finances coming in. Those that are starting new businesses, those that are starting new ministries. And also, uh, I had an email come in. Uh, excuse me, it was a voice message. Forgive me. And she said, Susan, I found you after so many years. And she said, I'm praying that my little uh, videos, that they will be blessed and God will show me how to what to do. So I thank you, Father God, that you are moving, moving, moving in the area of financial financial wisdom. Thank you, Lord, that you do this in the name of Jesus. Hi, Susan. My name is Kernet. I just re recently started watching your videos and I love listening to what you're saying. I'm 19 and thanks to one of my friends, I'm a lot closer to God than I once was. At the same time, I want to get close to him, but I don't really know him in a sense. I was watching one of your videos, and when I heard you say that there are people that love God and believe in God, but do, but do not look to him, it struck, it struck to me, and that I was wondering if I'm one of those people, and I think that because I don't read my Bible daily, nor do I pray daily. However, I do have a Bible app that I look through every day and remind myself to thank God for life and for the things he has put my family and I through. So, Father, we thank you, God, that you are moving in her life now. I thank you, Father, that you're bringing her back to a closer revealed walk with you, that you will reveal yourself greater to her than ever before, that the manifestations of you, Holy Spirit, will be so evident daily over her life, and that you will woo her back, Father, to reminding her to pick up the word and to read it daily, and that she will draw near and she will have a stirred up hunger like never before and that she will have daily conversations with you father you must remember that he hears everything you say and that he loves you so much and um i just want to encourage you to continue and uh keep that conversation open every moment of every day. Hi, I'm looking forward to talk to Susan if possible. I feel God has given me words and promises, but none of them have come to pass. We've all been there. <laughs> I keep watching the enemy win and I'm incredibly dis I'm incredibly discouraged and having difficulty trusting God as a result. I've been it's been years since some of these things 
And I've literally watched sin and the enemy win over and over. It's heartbreaking. And I cry out to God he, that he's supposed to be greater. If Susan could call me, I'd love to explain more. Thank you, Ashley. Father, I pray for Ashley right now in the name of Jesus, Father God, that you reveal the source of what's going on, why these have not come to pass. Father, I know in my own life that some answers are immediate. Some answers are that they take time for many reasons. It's not that you're not moving in our life, Father, but you might be moving as a witness in those lives around us. And I'm not saying that because you're not answering things right away that we can physically see, Father, that we should take this as a discouragement or that people are ridiculing us or saying, well, see, God never did it. And even we are, might be saying at times, well, God, you didn't do it. But God, we must live a crucified life. And we must know that as we bring to you our prayer requests with praise and thanksgiving on our lips, Father God, that it teaches us to surrender, not to what we want, but what you want, Father. And you would never have us live in poverty or depression or lack. But Father, through everything we experience, as we look to the apostles' lives, that the great things that they went through, Father, that they would never have chosen to go through being shipwrecked, being beaten by their own kind, and then being crucified upside down. All these things, Father, are not something that, that would naturally be encouraging to look forward to. But, Father, we live not for this world, but the next. For surely, even though heaven and earth shall surely pass away, you say my words shall never pass away. And we do know that the earth is your footstool, and whatsoever things we bind on earth, you bind in heaven. Whatsoever things we loose on earth, you loose in heaven. Father, we take that authority that you've given us, and we thank you, Father God, that we are trusting that you will lift this spirit of depression off of this one, Father, that you will remove them away from the eyes of the world and that you will draw them into that secret place with you where they will have come to understand what's going on, that you give them your godly wisdom, Father God, and that in all things you make the crooked places straight and that their character is being shaped into a fine diamond. In the name of Jesus. Living a Christian life is not an easy life always. But there is no other choice that makes any sense. For it is not the things of this world that we look at. Because they are temporal. They will pass away. But we are to look with a higher calling. A higher vision. Like the eagle. We are to see great distances. The Lord has given me dreams where I've seen telescopically and microscopically at the same time, simultane simultaneously. Why? To show you God is in you. He has not forgotten you. And that as you crucify your flesh, crucify your desires, you ask him what his plan for your life is. Maybe his plan is to walk away from everything and begin somewhere else. I don't know, but God knows. And look not to the former things, the way he used to do things. Don't look to the way that you feel like it's been so negative for many years. But say, Father God, I wake up this day and I start fresh with you. Whatever you do with my life, I'm giving my life to you. I'm thanking you and I'm trusting you that you are leading me and guiding me because there's nowhere else to go but God anyway. And it, it is good to think on these good things that he has done for us. He says, think on these good things. Don't think on the bad things. Don't let negativity consume your mind, your day. Don't be ridiculed by other people. Put down. Stay positive. No matter what you see. Thank him in faith. 
and begin to do what you can do in the natural, in the direction of that positive affirmation that God is giving you. Move in that direction. Believe in that direction. Transform your mind. Allow him to renew your mind. For God is not the author of confusion, but of power, love, and a sound mind. In Jesus' name. And that is today. We need to thank God today for his blessings, his life through us. And we will be okay no matter what comes our way. In Jesus' name. Now bless us, Father, for this day. Bless us as we go about our day trusting and believing you are in the midst of us. You are protecting us. You are leading us. You are guiding us. And that whatsoever things we face, we will be more than conquerors through Christ who lives in us. In Jesus' wonderful name. Have a blessed day anointed appointed day in him thank you for your prayer requests your praise reports continue to send your uh, questions and all of these things and i will address as the holy spirit leads for these videos are his they truly are whatever he wants to say daily in christ thank you for your giving to the ministry your financial um, faithfulness to God's work. I thank you so very much. In Jesus' name, let us be positive, for we have the best gift in the world inside of us, and let him move through us, through someone, this day. In Jesus' name, have a blessed day.